And we are recording. Hi, everybody. This is David P. France, and I'm coming to you from Basel, Switzerland. Before we get started, I'd like everybody who is out there uh, watching us to like the video, subscribe to our YouTube and BitChu channels, and also share the video. Tell people what we're up to. Uh, this is David P. France TV, and we are creating a platform create for creators and creative people, uh, artists, inventors, small business owners, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders. And today, I have the great pleasure of introducing, well, not really introducing, but presenting you guys, um, the supermodel, Cara Young. Um, Cara, how, how's it going? And wh where are you right now, by the way? I'm in, right now I'm in New York City. Uh, mm -hmm. The first time I talked to you, I was in Millbrook, but now I'm in New York just for school, you know, how it is now that school goes on one week, off one week, so it, it doesn't get crowded up in there. So this yeah. week I'm in the city. Yeah, in the city. Well, look, let me, let me just tell the audience um, how I came across you uh, was that <laughs> I had interviewed, I'd been interviewing people, young uh, black women about hair. And so I said, well, you know, let me, let me look up this hair thing and I wanna um, get more information about it and get more, just it was on YouTube and then also Google. So I came across your, I think it's your partner, your business partner first. Yeah, yeah. Dickie. And his name is- um, and Dickie. Owns, Dickie, right, Dickie. And he owns, or he's the co-owner of the salon that you you guys are um, that you guys own, and so then I doubled back to you. That's how I found out about your involvement and the business. And I said, "Oh man, this is great." She, <laughs> she's a small business owner, or she's an entrepreneur. Yes. Yeah, and so then I started right. watching the videos, and uh, I said, "Okay, I'm, I'm going to reach out." Right. So I sent him an email, and sent you an email, and you responded, and so here we are. Right. I talked to him about, I talked to him about that. I was going to speak to you as well and that your, your interest and why. And he thought it was really interesting. He's funny. He, he's so good on camera too. So yeah, probably get, he's really funny and really good on camera. So you'll yeah. like, you'll like talking to him. He's very right. irreverent person. Yeah. You'll well, look, him. he has a story, right? He has a story. Yeah. And also yeah. I saw a couple of his videos and I was like, wow. And I yeah. think one of the things, and, I, and we will get right to it is, I think one of the things that um, really interests me about you, besides the fact that I remember you when I was coming up, um, was is the fact that um, you are biracial, right? And you have a unique experience with regard to how you got started, um, a unique family background in which I, you and I have had conversations about. And so um, could you give people an idea of how you got started and you know how you were recognized and then how your career sort of began. Okay. I was definitely grew up in that mall life, like uh, the Fast Times of Ridgemont High where everybody went to the mall, everything was circulated around the mall. So I worked in this shoe store in the mall with this girl. We were the same age, we were teenagers in high school. And her mom said, oh, there's a look of the year contest uh, for, for models. You guys should be, you guys should try to be models. And so I don't remember, and I, it's funny because I have a very good memory, but I don't remember if she took our picture and submitted it or we got a picture taken and submitted it, but it wasn't professional or anything. And so we were both within the contest. And even if you didn't, like I didn't by any stretch win, like it was regional. My year was... The person who won my area was this girl, Debbie Falconer. I don't know if you know who she is. She was, she's really cute. Um, she's, uh, uh, why is that doing that? Sorry, yeah. that's me. I'm uh, sorry. Um, she's, uh, she was from Northern California, like me, myself and Christy Trillington. And she, uh, she started to act and do things, but she was a really good looking girl and she won our regional. And then it goes on. It, I it wasn't it the same year as Cindy Crawford and Stephanie Seymour. None of us won, you know, so That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, none of us won. And, but you all, you get noticed and everyone sees you, all the agents from Paris, Milan, all the agents saw us 
exposed in this contest way because people are, were at that time, especially were always looking for new faces. Mm. And when you first started modeling, they'd call it, that's what they'd just say, new face. And so I started modeling from that, but I was super, you know, I was, even though I'm from San Francisco, I lived in the burbs and I was very, you know, I was very, um, uh, sorry. Mm. I was, I'm sorry about that, David. I was very, uh, you know, provincial looking. I had my front tooth was broken. I uh, had my eyebrows like practically shaved off. <laughs> so I was a kid and my, the agent came up to me from San Francisco and he said, I think you're really pretty. I think that you could be a star. Well, I don't even know what that meant at that time. And he said, but you have to fix your front tooth and grow your eyebrows back. And then come see me when you have done these two things so that's what I did mm -hmm. and then I started modeling I started working pretty soon and I think you asked me what my first job was I think my first job was um uh, with Christy Turlington and do you know Jill Sorensen the name sounds she was a she was a Swedish she was a Swedish model and we were mm -hmm. all girls from Northern California she was actually came over as an au pair Mm -hmm. And those poor people, they have this girl come over, think they're going to have this like babysitter. And then she starts mm -hmm. modeling. <laughs> so yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. So it was really, really, you know, so that's how it started. We would just, mm -hmm. Christy, Christy and I would take the, the, have you ever been to Northern California? Yeah, once, well, Oakland. Okay. So exactly. So they have the BART train there. Mm -hmm. So we would get on the BART train and paint our nails and have rollers in our hair and the businessman would be like pissed off at us like we don't want to smell your nail be like you painted your nails and we're like stop please you know and we started working I started working in San Francisco that way but Christy went ahead of me like she went to Paris before me she did things before I did I went mm -hmm. to LA like I went to La I went to Los Angeles with a boyfriend and just I started doing commercials and wor working every single day there so, so what, 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 was, what was it like? All right, so give, give us an idea, because this is what I'm curious about, because I, I spoke to somebody else who was a model, and she, she was discovered, or, or she was approached three times, three different right. times. You know, and I said, and I, I think, although she modeled, that wasn't something that she was really interested in, so she didn't take it seriously, right? So if somebody comes right. up to you and says, here's a card, you know, we really think you should do this, 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 and this. So how long did it take you to understand that you had a shot? I think that some people don't, sometimes it's not legitimate. So right, to your course. friend's point, people, a lot of people come up and say, oh, do you want to be a model? I can take your picture. And it's not legit. So I think you just see, you, you research it a bit. You see if it's a re real, mine was legitimate, but they also still tried, like at that time, they always try to get girls to go to modeling school. And even then they were like, oh, why don't you go to modeling school? Why don't you go to Barbizon? And I was like, but I got signed by an agent. Why would I go to modeling yeah. school? Yeah. And so I see her point. And, but sometimes I think a lot of girls, a lot of women I know, not a lot, a few women I know, even at, they were in that contest, I thought, well, what happened to you? You could have been a model, but to your point, they could have had a boyfriend or they could have just not taken it seriously. You have to be willing to move. You have to be willing to acclimate to a different environment because you're not going to stay where you grew up. And, you know, I, I couldn't have stayed in Northern California right. and had my career. It wouldn't have been possible. So. Which brings me to the, to the, to the point where, um, you know, once you started to realize, or you realize, okay, this is a real, this is a real thing. I can, I can, right. I can yeah. this, right? And then um, we talked about this before you told your father, like, um, that you wanted to model and, and his response was not necessarily positive, right? No, so my dad's very um, cheap. You know, he doesn't, like, he does not give up the cash for anything. And I have five siblings, so it wasn't, so I said, oh, you know, can I borrow some money so I can take some pictures to test? He didn't even understand what, it was so beyond what we knew about in life. So I said, you know, can I do this? But I, I he wouldn't, he wouldn't lend it to me, which is fine. 
but, and so I wor- I worked until I got enough money to take pictures. As soon as I took my first pictures, I it was I started working, you, you know, know, so it was okay. And then you start working, so it's all right. So I was lucky in that way. And but he still was nervous about it. He didn't think he thought, oh, you're really smart and you're a kind person. You know, of course, my dad would think that. <laughs> if, if your dad doesn't think that, then it's pretty sad. But uh, he thought that I shouldn't be in a business whether, he said, I don't think it's right for you to be in a business whether people's opinions of your face or your figure determine whether you're successful or not. And I said, I'm fine with that kind of shallowness. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> and and I still didn't know what would lie ahead of me. I still didn't know that I was going to travel or have life that uh, to be exposed to the things that I was. I just thought of the financial security. I was excited about that because even though I still, I started modeling, I still had my job because I was nervous. I wanted to make Mm. sure that it was a thing that I did. And when I did, I said, you know, I'm definitely going to do this. And then I went to Japan uh, really soon into my career. I went to Japan for a few months and then I met a guy there and I went, when he came back from Japan, we moved to Los Angeles together. So my parents were like, what, what, you never even spent the night. You never even spent the night outside of this house, you know, because I never I had sleepovers and you're moving away. And so, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think what I'm getting to is that it, I think there was something instinctual that you had. Yes. Because you told your father, and uh, this is great. I mean, I keep saying this to you. Like, you, oh, dad, it's okay. I'm going to make more money than you then. <laughs> and like, I did you know. say that. <laughs> I did say that. It's so tacky and bad. I said, Dad, don't worry. I'm going to make so much more money than you. Yeah. Within three years, within a year, I'm going to buy you a truck. And he's like, okay, yeah. And, but you but knew. I did. But yeah, you knew, I did. right? And that, and I think that is the thing that I, I think is fascinating because a lot of times people don't know. And right. it is the difference between making it, making it or not. So when you know and you have the confidence to say, I'm going to do it, Right. Then it's, it's a go, right? It was actually working that gave me the confidence because modeling does not make you feel so secure. You actually feel like a bit insecure because everybody, you know, there's so many girls look great and so many girls have such good, a lot of it is people have really good personalities and they're fascinating to be around. So in my level, I didn't think about being a big model ever. I thought about being a working model, like mm-hmm. the way that they say a working actor. I thought about working. And when I moved to Los Angeles, I got an agent right away and I started working there. So, and then started doing commercials. So I thought my trajectory would be different. I thought I would start to try to act and do different things like that. But I just felt more, I would be more successful as a model. I felt more confident in that path because I had a bit of um, stage fright. So I thought I could just be in a studio mm-hmm. and be in a set and not be you know, surrounded by a lot, right. a lot of people live. So, and also, you, you, you know, your look translates, and you know, in terms of the image, translates onto the, I'm going to say onto the paper, but onto into the magazine, right? So, you, you have also, from what I noticed, and this was even way back when I was looking in magazines, you have a, um, a charisma. Right, oh. that translates right. Oh, and, yeah, and That's and then funny. I guess it's a combination of the people that are working with you being able to see that and then you know move that into into place, right? So yes, do you understand? Okay, what I'm saying? yeah, I do. I like that way of saying yes. I guess you have. I guess it is instinctual to your point, and I guess you do have a chemistry with people. You do have a chemistry of working with people, and it works sometimes. And sometimes it doesn't. There was a lot. I went on jobs that I didn't get used at all or I got sent home, which, you know, at not in the beginning stages, but when you're, when, you, when I first started working for Vogue or did something like that, there's times I'd be like, uh-huh. just me uh-huh. here. I'm not, uh, other girls are shooting and I'm not doing anything. So that definitely happens in your career and your life. So, mm-hmm. but as far as the working day-to-day things, but the big time, I didn't know that that was I didn't know that that was what I was head for, but I was very, you know, obviously I was very pleased with that as that change of my career. <laughs> that was yeah. a good part. And from LA, um, what was the next step after LA? So you were in LA for a short 
period of time and then you start I was in LA for several years and I was in LA for several years and from Los Angeles I went to New York for a little bit and I went to see Vogue and I went to see the magazines and I worked a tiny bit but I didn't I was working but I wasn't working I I, I wouldn't have moved for that you mm -hmm. know and so my so I went to Paris for a while and then I started I worked there and did some good pictures like I did this great uh this great um shooting with Jill Bench Simone in Africa we went to uh um Senegal and it was myself Josie Brain and Elle McPherson so we went to Senegal and I did these amazing pictures with him and then you sort of go wait a minute this is is the real deal. Boy, this is going to get better. And I remember in Paris, Monica Bellucci was like, I saw your pictures. They're crazy. I was like, I know. I'm really excited. So you start to get recognized for the things that you do like that. And people mm -hmm. will notice one shooting, definitely. And it'll expose you things. I also did this job and just got exposed in a different way. And then I, the next time I went to Milan, then I went back to New York. And I, I remember I went to see it and I was seeing Elizabeth Saltzman. And she was like, oh my God, this, and I did these pictures with this guy, John Bishop, for this magazine, Amica. And she goes, these are amazing. This is, because yeah. you find yourself, you don't always know, you know, you don't always know, like what, like I thought it'd be, look sexy all the time and really cool and be all hard. And then it's like, no, smile. You look really cute when you smile. So. So, so but you went to, who took the, you had to go to Europe, I think. How, absolutely how absolutely europe, europe and this is what i told um that my friend who who's out in la who was in italy and then she started working a lot and i said there's something about the italians that understand absolutely how to position how 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 it works right so they'll see the angle that no one sees or they'll see an angle that you know americans can't see right? i do believe that and i thought i think that in Paris and in Milan, they were more receptive to a different sort of, they were receptive to a different sort of look. And once you start working in America, back at that time, they really wanted you to have gone to Europe just mm -hmm. for your body of work, because they want you want to prove yourself. You, it's everyone thinks it's about yourself, but you're actually selling something. You're always selling, you know, an eyeshadow, a shirt, a lipstick. You're always selling something else. It's not just about, oh, Cara, this is the way you're going to look at pictures. It's it's about what I'm selling. So when yes. you if you don't sell something, you will not continue to work. Right. So this is a side question. How, how do you feel about Instagram and all of these people that want to be models now that, you know, position themselves as models through Instagram? People that would never... Be, back in the day, would, they would never have had an opportunity. I mean, and now it seems like being a model is like, you know, perceived or is seen as a very prestigious thing, right? So people, right. you go through the Instagram, you see more models than you see. You, you understand what I mean? Uh, oh, yeah. And I don't necessarily, it's the audience. It's what someone wants. It's a magazine is everybody going to buy a magazine? Is everybody mm -hmm. going to look at an ad? But it's so easy to just look at, it's easy to look at Instagram. And there's a lot of demand for a certain type of woman and a certain type of girl that I don't, I don't exactly understand it. I don't know what they're selling or how they make money. And I have a girlfriend that does it. I have a girlfriend that her name is Zara Elise and she, I've known her We're from the same area. And she does that kind of, you know, very sexy mm -hmm. kind of, poses and not, I'm, I'm like I'm not exactly 100% sure how she makes money but I think she does I think she's fine and I think she does endorsements or paid partnerships or things like that so mm. but it's, it's just a change it's just a change the world changes it's always going to change and that's what it's about I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing no, you know no. but but if you don't see someone I remember I had a friend that came to New York and she never, she thought models don't really look like that. They don't really look like that. And I was like, but they do go to a fashion show and you'll see someone with extremely long legs and extremely fit body, extremely beautiful skin. And that that's where, to your point, that's where the word super comes in because, you know, you've seen Naomi run. Have you seen her beautiful arms and legs? I mean, that's, you're not, I don't care how much, 
filters you have, you're not, you're never going to look like that in person. I, I not, you, you can't filter yourself right. like that. I, I think, I think it's fascinating because it, it's as if there's a, a law of attraction thing going on. So like you're walking around in Northern California doing your thing, you know, mind your business. And then people say, oh, you should do blah, blah, blah. And you're like, okay. Right. And so then yeah. you go to the next step. Right. And then of course is a whole group of women. Right. And then all of a sudden you, you get selected. Right. And I think, I think um, it's like anything that, you know, when you rise to become professional, the pool gets smaller and smaller and the people that you know that are doing it, that's a handful of people. Right. Right. right? And then all of a it's sudden you're in, the, you're in a room and then you like, you know, everybody that's going for the job or, you know, when the job yeah. is coming. Right. Because you, you no know longer, them. when you get to that level, you no longer go look for jobs. They that's actually right. come to you. It, it, sometimes when you're filming something, like when we do the Revlon, I can't, you say how does how things change. There was a time when we all did the Revlon campaign, the most uh, beautiful women in the in the world were Revlon. They had a woman from everywhere. There was girls from Africa, girls from every part of the world. We were all together for real in yeah. those pictures. Right. But later on in the '90s, in that's in the early '90s, right? But in like the late 90s, and there's a picture of me, Cindy, Claudia, uh, one other girl, and Veronica Webb. We're not yeah. together. We're like, oh, you did that job. Oh, we, they put us all together they put you, wearing they... the same. Yes, it's not. So it became different in the late 90s. And that's to your point about the Instagram, just things change with time. Yeah. It doesn't make it, it doesn't make it, it just makes it different. You know, it's, it different. it's more saturated. Anything good anything good is going to be hard to do. Like, mm -hmm. of course, everybody wants to do something like that, but you have to, you have to do it. It's not going to come looking for you. Is it hard? Is it hard work? People have a perception that you guys are not really like, you're just like kind of moving through having fun. And, and, and look, when I would, this is how I found out about you because my mother, uh, very much creative person, artist, and we would always have these magazines around, right? So I would be thumbing through the magazines. And the one that I saw and I remember is the Revlon. I think I remember you before, but the right. Revlon. Oh, right. Okay. Is where I remember you from. And I say, who is that? I remember, <laughs> who is that? You know? And I would want, you know, it, it got to the point, And I think this is what was going on. And the people behind the scenes, you, they get a lot of credit for it. It, it, it was as if. There were a group of these women. You guys became the it girls because even though you were working and doing the shoots, somehow they were positioning or editing these magazines so you could really follow your story. Right. right. So go, I think oh, so. Oh, there's so and so. Oh, okay. Now, and now she's doing this, or then then she's doing that. You know. So I kind of knew of what you guys were up to. And they also like it. They like, we did go out together. A lot mm -hmm. of us are very dear friends. As you can see that there's still pictures of us together now, I mean, in, a year ago before the, so of course, yeah, people are really friends and they do say, okay, this one gets along with that one. This one likes that one. This one, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. you asked me about the most fun job. I, I had some really, really fun jobs. And then I had some horrible jobs that were really hard. The work the work ethic is long and hard. We're always up at five, mm -hmm. right? Because that's, you have to do your hair and makeup and the light looks most beautiful at that time. So mm -hmm. I'd have a job and I'd get up at five every morning, do hair and makeup and then do my pictures until a certain time of day, have a break and then do that. So is it, I'm jumping in the water selling you a bathing suit, but it's March, you know? So I'm in the Hamptons jumping in the water. Those pictures of Christy, Turlington and I on the beach in in Montauk, we're in bathing suits and walking around with like a towel on, but it's not summer. <laughs> so if you think that's, e it's not easy to do. Yeah, it's sure. not, it's not easy to do, but it's what you, I spent a life of being uncomfortable. My husband's like, you can do anything. You can tolerate anything because I spent a life of being, you know, in a position or staying in a position. I remember I was doing this job with Albert Watson once and he's like, he goes, do you feel good? Does that feel good? I said, yeah, I feel really comfortable. He goes, then it doesn't look beautiful. I said, 
Wow. <laughs> <laughs> if you're sitting there slovenly, it's not, you know. I mean, you've worked, you've worked with some, some major, major, major people. I mean, yeah, I was lucky. You, 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 can you name some of the, just off the top of your head, name some of the people that you work with in terms of photographers? Um, I mean, I think I've worked with, I feel like I've worked with every, everyone. I mean, I worked with Peter Lindbergh. I work with uh, Herb Ritz, not enough, but I worked with Herb Ritz. Um, I worked with Patrick DeMarchelier a lot. I was Gilles Ben Simone a lot. Um, you know, I was very, very fortunate in my career with who Antoine Verglas, you know, Sante Durazio. I worked with a lot of people. So I was lucky with my career uh, with the people I worked with really like Matthew Ralston did the um, Revlon ads. Richard Avedon obviously did my first Vogue cover and my second. So it Jeez. was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's take a, take a look at some other, let me see if I can do this right. Let's take a look. We're not having a bad time, though, as you can see from the picture. <laughs> no, 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 no. Look, this is fantastic. So, look, we're going to go through it. You guys, hopefully, we're still taping. And as it pops up, um, this this is the first picture. I think it's the black and white. I see it. I see it. I see it, right? Arch, I mean, where, where was this taken and how was this taken? So that picture is a picture for Italian Vogue. It's at the Venice Film Festival. And at, I came up and asked Dennis Hopper and Joe Pesci, could they do pictures with me? Because we wanted the, it to be like more interesting, the clothes. Mm -hmm. And they were like, sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah, why not? And so that was really, I mean, like that's that was a really fun shoot. And while the f f film festival was going on, we were there doing photos. So that was super fun. Yeah. I think I have uh, other ones in this film. Oh yeah, there's a lot of that one, yeah. Yeah, this was, um, who shot was this for? Was it for some, do you remember the, the company or? Wait, is it the one right next to it? Yeah. Is that, I'm showing my butt? Like yeah, you're showing things. your butt. Oh, that's when, that's in the very beginning of my career. That's, you see, because I never used to straighten my hair, I'd always go everywhere with my hair curly and make, you know, if they didn't, if the job didn't straighten my hair, that was just too bad. Uh, I wasn't going to do it. Until good, Steven Meisel, Steven Meisel, that's another one that I worked with, who really shaped and molded me as a model. And he said, do not come here with your hair sopping wet. <laughs> you know, do <laughs> your hair, get your hair. I don't care where you go, get your hair done before you come here. So... So that picture is for Glamour magazine in, um, where is it? It's in one of the French West Indies. And it, this photographer, Alex Chatelain, shot that for Glamour magazine. Yeah, and you, you, were, you were doing it for sure. Yeah. <laughs> you are doing it for sure. This is the Vogue magazine. He was telling me that like I had a little bit of cellulite on my ass. He was like, you have to be careful. I was like, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Like but I mean, I mean, look, look, they see every day, right? So they can see things that most people are like, whatever, you know. I was horrified. It's like, oh my God. So right here, whoops, right here is an October Vogue. I think it's right to the, to the Oh, right. that Vogue. That's with Patrick Dumochelier. That's on the beach in East Hampton. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, that's, that's a Sam McKnight hair. That's um, Carlene Surf, the dude who... She really was instrumental in making me what you would call a supermodel, really pushed Steven Mizell to shoot me, pushed Vogue to use me. Right. And yeah, it was, she was amazing for my career. And we're still, you know, we're still dear friends. So it's like so. a community of people. Sometimes you, it's not who, let's say, it's it's someone indirectly influencing, just like in, in life, right? Somebody Right, she them. definitely did. And she had no reason to necessarily do that. I was lucky with you know, I was yeah. lucky with that. Yeah, it's great. I look, I remember these photos too. I mean, because my sister had a uh, Vogue. This is a, a German Vogue, right? Oh yeah, that's on. That's that's in Paris, and it's like the we're on the river, and because I'm such a California person, I remember when they opened the film, they threw it. And I was like, "Don't throw that! Don't litter! Don't litter!" <laughs> I was like, "Are you crazy?" <laughs> I said, "Please don't yeah. litter." It's very look you you these are some great pictures you guys wait till you, there's more coming. 
this one here. There's a series of these pictures on the internet, and I happen to pick a couple of them. This is the one you were talking about in, uh, in Montauk? These pictures, I said to Christy Christine. recently, I said, I can't believe how many pictures there are. And I said, was that two days? And she goes, I think it was one. I think we went out the night before, got up in the morning and shot all day and then left that night. And I said, how can there be that many? She's like, I really think it was just one day. I remember it is too, but you know. And so that's for Italian Vogue also with Franco Sassani did the styling and Patty Dubroff did the makeup. Bob Racine did the hair. Those are great pictures. And it's also, you have to understand, we grew up together. We've known each other since we were teenage yeah, yeah, sure. girls. Sure. So we're, there's also, a, there's with those pictures, there's a comfort. I'm not going to jump on everybody's back, you know, like uh, that. Uh, 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 uh. Well, I mean, look, it, it, it's clear that you're friends, right? I mean, it's clear. And yeah. she seems to be uh, a pretty open person besides the fact. And she's I mean, lovely. Yeah, she's, she's right. lovely. Um, right here. This is um, another, is this another shot from Glenmore? It looks like more like um, um, catalog. It's definitely Sports Illustrated. Yep, yep. It's, it's Sports Illustrated, yep. yeah. It's the 25th anniversary, and that was with, I did that job with Maria Von Hart, Stephanie Seymour, and Rachel Hunter. And that, I have to say, was a really, really fun job. Um, there was a camera crew there, so... Uh, and then I walked by in the morning and they were like doing coke and they were all pissed off. And I said, I didn't see shit. I just, <laughs> I didn't see anything. Um, so that was, uh, that was a fun job. We all, I don't know how well we knew each other, but we all bonded really well on that job and laughed. That's why that's Mark Hispard, um, the photographer yeah. who's no longer with us, but he's a great photographer. He was really lovely. And you remember, all, it's it. like, you remember every, you remember the stylist, the, the photographer, I, you, you remember this, right? Thank you. <laughs> wow. Da, da, da. And here, this is the one, um, I guess it's to the right, right? From, from what you can say, black in the white chair. Oh, right. That is some, that's a great photographer did that. I think it's, um, he just, I think it's David Bailey or no, I'm sorry. That's not, that's Arthur Elgort. That's in Scotland. And this is a sort of great, I've just started, I moved to New York and I was in Scotland on this job and I heard the editor whispered to the photographer, she's going to be a biggie. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I'm going to be a biggie. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, he knew, right? Yeah. They know. They know. Yeah, they're they lovely. Know. Some of them, yeah. They know. I look, it's exciting. It's like, I'm, I mean, I have nothing to do with the career. But I think what it what it is, is as you're talking about it, and hopefully people out there that are watching can can also see, like, yeah, I remember that photo. I remember her. Or, you know... Um, and there's uh, Victoria's Secrets. Um, yeah, we did. I did that. Victoria's Secrets is great because they'll use you for years. Mm -hmm. They will use you for like four years and you'll do a ton of jobs with them in you know, St. Bart's, New York, uh, Palm Beach, Miami. So they were lovely like that. They, you could really work a long time with them and, you know, make a bit of bank. <laughs> <laughs> but they'll use your pictures again and again with impunity they just will use it and use it and use it and be like well you did that job that day so right. it doesn't matter so, that it's two years later <laughs> right it's their property right once they yeah take it, that's right it. and there's another vogue shot uh another vogue that's cover. my first vogue cover with richard yeah. abaddon yeah 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 you were you 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 yeah you were up there yeah, you were up there. i remember that i remember look i remember you for sure. Thank you. <laughs> For sure. I was like, who is that? I mean, in, the, in my mind, I would say that, right? Yeah. Um, you should have asked your mom or your sister. They would have said. <laughs> well, I think that, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that later because I think they knew who okay. you were too. I think they knew, okay. but we weren't talking about it, you know? We weren't. And this one I like because, uh, I don't know, this, this more, looks more like a European shot. I'm not sure if that's correct or not it is for um french vogue you right. were right about that but it's in brazil it's in buzios brazil and i was i remember we did it with we asked guys to do it you know like the way you said is it easy and guy me, regular people will do and they'll go okay i'm over it they're not trying to do roll and roll and roll <laughs> roll as a film Mm -hmm. They're over it. If you take like five pictures, they're like, okay, let's, they are, aren't we done with this? Uh, so that was a really nice series. It was myself and Karen Alexander was on that job. 
Yeah. Yeah, I remember, and I remember Carolyn, Karen Alexander as well. I think there's a picture oh, of her so that cute. I found uh, later so on. Let's see if I can get to, yeah. Aha! Now this is, this is, we got to talk about this a little bit. Um, this is epic. This, this is, is epic. epic, right? This is epic. Um, because there are a lot of models here, and I think I, I know a lot of them. But I'm gonna I'll let yeah. you talk about the photo and what was this like? You guys were all in one room, I assume, right? That we were all together. That we were all together, and that was in, because that was the community of it. It was a, it was about being all together, and Beth Ann, and Iman organized that. Wow. And Beth, I don't know if you know who Beth Ann Hart is. Yeah, she's Beth like Ann one Hardison, of the greatest yeah. agents. She's lovely. She's one of the greatest agents of all time. I actually didn't credit her. I put it on Instagram one day and she's like, uh, and I said, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I did it at two o'clock in the morning. I forgot. It was just like, a, I did it as a memory, but she organized that. And it was a great day because I hadn't spoken to Naomi in a long time. And I, after that day, she said, you know, can you please, can we please go up to my hotel and talk, talk this out. And so that was a great day for someone that I'd spent a lot of time with as a friend. And then it had nothing to do with us. We had a, I had to break up with somebody and, you know, people say something and they think they need to take sides and you, you don't need to take sides. So um, that was a great day just for all of us. And we knew that it was an epic, you know, we knew yeah. it was a very important thing. I mean, not everybody... There were some getting alongs and some not getting along, but it was really fun day. It was just in a, in a studio on the in the West Village, and you know everybody came, everybody picked their clothes. They tried to make it as simple, you know, as possible. possible. They changed the position. Like originally, I was I was next to Beverly, and um, but we we met, moved around, and I said I'm mm -hmm. fine with moving around. So. So some of the people, that there's, a a, there's Karen Alexander there, there's yeah. Beverly Johnson there, there's I'm Iman, there's um, Tyra Banks. Yes. We were all Campbell. There. These are the ones that are, you know, jumping no out. Noemi. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of great yeah, models there. Yeah, yeah. And there's a woman, there's another woman that came up. She's all the way on the left. I remember her. She used yeah. to have long hair. I can't remember her name. She was a pretty, pretty... A biggie. All the way on the left hand side, right here. Boom. Is it Cynthia Bailey? No, it's not Cynthia Bailey. No, it's, okay. It's, oh, she, she did a lot of work in the 80s as well. I can't remember her name. Ooh, is it is she African? Is it um she's all the way she's Katucha? Uh-uh. She's next to Karen mm -hmm. Alexander on the okay. I can't see it big, so that's yeah. why I can't. And I don't want to I don't want to push it so. I don't want to push it and not see it. It's only because it's tiny. On it's like a thumbnail on my screen. Yeah, it's weird, right? But this I'm one, sorry. Right here, this is uh, Karen Keller. You and Karen Alexander, I believe. Yeah, you have She's um, so cute. in your hair now. <laughs> no, it's when you're getting ready. Yeah. Before it was, I don't remember if it was before a show or something because I was very, I wasn't a good show girl. I was very nervous and shy, and so she's just like, "Come on, it's not a big deal. You can do it." And so it was like right before. Like maybe an Azadine show or something like that. So they were, it, I have to say, Karen and uh, Naomi was great about it. Like when she said to me, I will, if you want to start doing shows, because I had just broken up and had a child, a toddler. And she goes, if you want to do shows, we can go to Paris and I will tell everybody I won't do any shows unless they use you. And I was like, you don't have to do that. But it was so cute. So I had, I, I'm telling my supportive experiences that I had. And that's what I had with those ladies. Yeah, I mean, look, you had a, your, the circle was good. I, I mean, from yeah. what we could see. And I think, um, I think in any profession, this is what you want, right? Yeah. You want people yes. to back you up. You want people to support what it is you're doing or trying to achieve. But like what you're saying in any profession, it's true. In any profession, there's going to be competition. In any profession, you're not going to get along with everybody. Your chemistry is mm -hmm. not going to be right. There's going to be times that it's not good. And, you know, there's times, there's jobs that I, I remember two jobs that I acted difficult on and I don't know what I was doing, but I didn't act right. And I remember that I'm not, I don't try to remember every, all the things that other people did. I try to go, Oh, I did that. I need to work on myself about that. So, mm -hmm. but I see this next one. This is a cute one. That's with, um, this was a funny time. We were, Naomi and I were going, we were in New York. Mm -hmm. This one here, Roma, Roma Dolce Vita. 
Are you talking yes, about? we were going. Yes, we were going to Italy. We were going to Rome. We were going. To, she was going out with Adam Clayton at the time from U two. From U two. And I said, oh, let's take this airline. And she said, no, let's take this one. You're so cheap. And of course, the airline that I picked was delayed. And she was pissed off at me. And I said, you know that it wasn't actually because it was cheaper that the plane was delayed. You know that it's not actually my fault. And she was so mad at me <laughs> before we got there. She was so pissed off. So our plane was really delayed. It was coming from Los Angeles. But then she got happy because Leon you know, that actor Leon and Matt Dillon got there and they were on our flight. And so mm -hmm. then it was like, oh, okay, now you're in a good mood. <laughs> in a good mood. <laughs> and so when we got on the plane, there was this family, a mother and her daughters, and they were singing and they were drunk and they were being really loud. And, and people are over, they're trying to sleep and they weren't delayed. They came from LA. So they were fine and they were wide awake. So as we're leaving, I'm like, man, we don't say anything to them. Don't say anything to them. And she turned around and she goes, obviously you had an upgrade. You need to sit in the back where you book. <laughs> I was just like, I'm sorry. You guys are being loud. <laughs> no. So that was, and so that whole trip, Michelle Comp shot those pictures mm -hmm. and for Italian Vogue. And it was just a reportage just walking around going to restaurants going out to places and just it was so fun that was really fun like Naomi can eat we went to a restaurant with Matt and Leon and she was like Matt Dylan's like why don't you order something why don't you eat a little something she has like five things <laughs> over in them down <laughs> and uh the the person in the middle is uh would be your your first yes th person. yes that's my ex Sante Durazio yeah, yeah yeah and he's an artist and photographer and yes he's a cetera, great photographer a great photographer okay here's he another is. shot yeah that's that same one in montauk if yeah. you can believe it we look different and our makeup's a little bit more severe so obviously they changed us to get more towards uh the sun going down but that's mm -hmm. more of the same that's that and those are that just that fun that that fun day you know mm. uh Christy got on the way out there. She got a six pack of beer and drank it in the car on the way. <laughs> so we called her six pack Sally for like eight years after that. She's like, okay, okay, all right, stop this, it. This 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 next one is the hair rules. Um, and these got you guys. This is in no specific order. I just put them in. But this I I wanted to show because we're going to eventually talk about this as we go through the pictures, and we're going to go a little quicker. But this is the hair rules. Uh, what do you call it? It's the billboard. It's not the billboard. It's a, it's a mega it is the post. billboard. It's a mega post. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's, covering, it's covering a couple of um, stories. And um, where is it about? It's in Times Square or close to Times Square? Yeah, it's in Times. It's in Times Square. It's right across from the M&M store. But give us Times the story of, of how this happened. I'm sure this was an interesting thing where you had to you had to. It was um, the day that we did a shoot. It was the day that we did a shoot and we would try to do we, we tried to do girls and um, I wanted to use, I always like to sh shoot everyone. I like to shoot a blonde, a brunette, a bl black girls, Spanish girls. And so I did that job. And my little boy who's 13 years old now was a toddler and he came from school and he saw me and he's, my older one was so used to me modeling. He didn't care. It was normal for him. He's a photographer now. He didn't care. He grew up on the sets both of his parents being in the business but my little one was really creeped out by it he told me that i was acting weird and <laughs> he was trying to like take my eyelashes off and trying to rub i was like i don't like when you have a face like this and you're moving weird and acting weird <laughs> <laughs> and so i said you have to get out of here and so we did some pictures with him on my lap that are adorable uh -huh. and then we did this picture and it was just a day that we did a ton of models and a ton of things. And then there was like four and one of that was four of us. And then they, I didn't pick that one. They decided to just pick that one with and put it in Times Square. And we had a party and we had people be very supportive of us. Like we would have parties and Nas and Khalees would come sure. and Russell Simmons would always come and Annabella Shora and Blaine Trump. All these people would always come to support, you know, what was happening with us. And the salon was in Hell's Kitchen. So it was, it was, it only made sense to do it in Times Square. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, were you surprised that people came in to support? I mean, look, I mean. Uh, I was happy. I mean, I come to, I come to all my friends' events. If, yeah. 
everybody, these, everyone does something to give back everyone that I know. And they're very kind. And I go to, I go to my people's, I go to their events. So sure. I'm glad when they come to mine, I'm really yeah. glad. And this was huge. I mean, I, I, I don't know where I was at the time. So this was like 10 years ago or more, more or less. Um, I think it was, a you know, like seven, eight years ago. It yeah. Have, yeah. Because I was not, you know, I, I would have known, if I was in New York, I would have known about it at least. Yeah, but you've I was been already there happy. 13 years, right, right. Yeah. 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 And this is you and Dickie. Yeah. You know? I think, oh yeah, that's the, that's our opening for a hair. year anniversary for our opening party for hair rules. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you, he, you both have great interesting stories for, I mean, I have saw videos of him and I'm like, this guy, I gotta, I gotta talk to him. He knows, he knows, he has experience. Um, he has experience. had a life, you know, he has life had experience. a life. His, you know, his mother died when he was a young boy. She was white. His father was black. He, you know, was in foster homes at first. And then his father got him. He has a very interesting, I bet. he has a very interesting life. And you grew up with cousins and aunts. And then, you know, he has a fascinating story. I bet. Uh, I, I knew just based on like, what he was doing, how he was talking, his, you know, the visual. And I said, and as you, and we touched on this and you guys, I mean, brought this up in the beginning. Um, I am not biracial, right? I don't, I'm not, right. of course. But I would say that I can understand, and maybe it's because I empathize with people in general, but I understand more so now, perhaps maybe what someone like you or someone like him go through more so than I did when I was coming up. And maybe sure. because I'm here <laughs> and I've been here for right. 13 years and I have a different relationship with people than I had when I first uh, started coming up. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I didn't analyze it as much until I got older and then I met other people who were the same, like for instance, Dickie and Jay David. Naomi introduced me, Naomi Campbell introduced me to Jay Davidson and he's the same thing, but Dickie and Jay both have a white mother and a black father. So mm. their experience is different as far as how they, I don't know how they view themselves because they're also males, but I was raised by my mother to be very confident and very secure in, it doesn't always make you be that way, but you're told that like to be secure in what you are racially and to be proud of what you are racially. And so my dad didn't have those discussions with me because, you know, he's white. So of course he's proud. He doesn't, it's not, it doesn't enter into his mind to say, be proud, you know, but it, she, she did that with us. And I love that she did that, but they aren't, a, you know, she's a black woman and he's a white man. And we're the ones who were children growing up, you know, in an all white area. So it wasn't always that fun, but I don't know if it would have been that fun it, any other way. But then, you know, you grow up and you get used to it and it it's okay. And you you don't know when you're having these experiences there, like even school, everything is actually to teach you something about yourself and to how to deal with yourself in life and how to learn with other people and how to handle things with other people. So I mean, yeah, it wasn't a, always fun. You, you, you have a very uh, even, even, um, way of describing it right I mean like it seems like you you really have thought about it you know um quite a bit right? I didn't think about it at all when I was growing up it just to be like funny you know I would you know I would we would just like laugh and say things about it my sisters and I but I didn't think about it in, until I was older and I met other people sure. who felt like pretty negative about it mm -hmm, uh mm -hmm. about being biracial and i just never had that experience i think that i wasn't like glad or not glad it just what it that's just what it was mm -hmm. i don't remember my past life so this is the only comparison i have so i wasn't negative about it i just thought it was different and i don't think it's a bad thing to be different well, than other clearly. People. i think it's fine so yeah and you and i and i think um and here's another great shot um, of you and Christy Tillington. Yeah, that's a, we work well together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I think I say you do exude a, a confidence. I mean, I, I don't know if that was it's it was the same or it is the same. You know, when you were coming up, when you were younger. But I mean, when I, we had our with, first conversation with a broken like, front tooth, no way. Yeah, I mean, I was like, you know, on the phone, like. Oh, okay. You know, it was like, this is going to be good. Just because you were like very definitive about 
this is how I grew up, right. this is how it is, you know. Mm. Even right. when you said, okay, I had to go through some things that were not so great, you said yes. it with like a very positive attitude, right? So you're like, well, yeah, you know, it, it happened to me, so, you know. That's what my husband says. Like, I've just told him recently some of my experiences as a child. And he's like, I can't believe your mom and dad and you guys the way that you are with the way that you grew up, you know, because he wouldn't imagine, you know, when we moved from San Francisco to the, to the East Bay that people picketed and didn't want us to move there and would like would do blow horns out of our house and say, mm -hmm. you know, go home, go back to where you came from and like shoot our dog and be torturous in school. My sister, my sisters are really pretty. And there was these kids that tormented us when we were little. And when we were older, we were like 16, 15. These guys asked us that. And I go, you know that you were complete assholes when we were, were little, right? And you were really rude and mean. And they go, we didn't know you were going to grow up and be <laughs> so fine. <laughs> and I said, okay, well, that's kind of a compliment. And you look like Farrah Fawcett turned half N-word. And it's like... Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I was, I said, do you remember you said that to me? And I go, but how you say that as a compliment? And I said, you know, it's, it's never, it's not a compliment to say that ever. It's always, it always is a negative thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Well, we'll <laughs> it's not whatever. Time. It's, but I'm not tormented. I'm not yeah. defined by that kind of thing. It's just that happened. And I know, and that, like, there's sometimes people would, write me things and say, I said this to you that was mean. I said that to you. And I was like, I don't remember that. No. Okay. That's good for you. And I, you know, like I grew up with, I wasn't accepted. My father's mother never accepted that my father married sure. a black woman and she didn't acknowledge any of us until my cousins basically said that who I was <laughs> and that I was like, a model and the cover of magazines and doing sports illustrated so I met my grandmother then, wow. you know, so I don't, I didn't have that kind of regard for her that you would for your grandmother. Mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I, I still will say my dad's mother. I don't hate her. I felt bad for her, but, but by the time she was ready to meet all of us, like my dad was upset because one of my sisters wouldn't go because she said, no, it's done. I'm, she was like 19 years old. At the time she says, I'm done. I don't want to meet her. She didn't want to meet us. Boom. And I went and one of my other sisters went. When my little sister acted like, you know, a war separated us. She was like hugging her crying. I was like, why are you acting that way? <laughs> you know, this was her choice, right? So, but I looked at all her photo albums and my cousin, thank God, my cousin Debbie went with me. And I looked at all of her photo albums and then you know, I was happy when she died, she gave them all to me so I could see what my dad's upbringing was like. But my dad's sister, my father's sister called when we were little and she lived in Arizona. And so I grew up knowing, thank God, I grew up knowing my, you know, my aunts and everything. And, you know, I, I didn't, people didn't travel like they do now. They didn't sure. go. Like my uh -huh. mom's from North Carolina. We, we went twice. Like my great grandparents, I went to see them when I was, you know, a five and then when I was older we didn't go see people a lot when we were younger but I changed my family to be a really really traveling family but I mean when you think about it it was a huge deal you know at the time that your your mother and father were you know it's crazy to get married. it's a huge deal it is and uh, I was talking to someone else um another interview I had and there was part of us that because we came up in the 80s that we People said, well, you know, did that really happen? Because it, we, yeah. we, we we skew sort of younger. I think, you know, we're right. older now, but we skew younger. So people say, I think that they associate us with what's happening now versus what happened, right. you know, in the 70s or like late 60s. But I'm like, no, man, like even in the 80s, you know, it was it was it was tight, you know, for a lot of people. Yes. Yes, it was, it was, I, it was tough. It was like, I told my kids, they couldn't believe it. When I was in high school, they had slave day, like where the cheerleaders 
and everybody would auction off somebody that was popular sure. and then that would, person would wear chains and it's like i mean could you imagine someone doing that and this is in the 80s and my kids are like you're full of shit i go why would i make up something so specific you know and it's not and i knew and there was a couple of people who were like this is horrifying you know <laughs> Just, and i'm not so defensive i'm not so defensive but there are things that are blatantly wrong and in poor taste you yeah. know that you just cannot do and cannot say so. well this picture I, I i'm on the next picture it's of you stephanie seymour um uh, cindy crawford and also yeah veronica webb and christy veronica was there webb. too i don't know why she's not in there with us she who was in that you say Christy was there too. This is a sad day, actually. I know that we're acting fun, but this was at Orbe Canalis' funeral. Mm -hmm. So it was awful, but it was such a big deal. And they did such a beautiful montage of his life. They showed him leaving and when he was a little boy, the last plane to leave Cuba. And they showed all of his work and like Miley Cyrus sang. It was amazing. It was an amazing send off. And I have to say that you know, I think that Christy and, you know, people organized it and made it, it didn't happen right after he died, but thank God they did that in time enough that they could say goodbye to him. Cause now, you know, you can't do that no, kind no, of thing anymore because what's happening, but it was beautiful. It was at Lincoln Center, you know, it was really lovely. And, and every hairdresser came, every hairdresser yeah, I saw, came. I saw some of the other yeah. pictures and they were, I was like, man, this, this whole thing could have been in a magazine. Like it really yeah, was, it was incredible. whoever was the artistic director for the funeral. I mean, I'm not, I'm being really, you know. Um, it was incredible. And it afterwards, was incredible. Hmm? And, and this day, the same day after this, Christy, Cindy, and I went to dinner together, the three of us. And then after that, there was like a party at uh, the Edition Hotel in New York, which was, was a great place that they had people had events that they, they had to say goodbye to Orbe again. Right. And, you know, and so like just, that was a smaller group, but, you know, and it, you know, it was a really beautiful send off for someone that was, you know, really touched a lot of lives. So. Yeah. yeah like I, I remember uh, his name or seeing his name in the, in the magazine. Right. And seeing his He was picture. Cuban. He was definitely a celebrate. It was definitely really a celebration of life that day. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is another one of you. I'm going to go through a bit quicker so we can get to. This is okay. one of you and um, Christy. Yeah. <laughs> on a bed and you guys are going to see like words and stuff. This is one of you. This one I've seen in conjunction with other photos that you've done. This is one with the hair going out. Oh, 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 that's a good one. This is an Azadine yeah. Alaya dress. Yeah, yeah. I don't know like how you wear it, but I know Tina Turner wore it for real to perform. And so how it would go sort of, if, if you don't understand this, they would have, they would do the fashion shows and then right after the fashion shows, they would bring the, the, the clothes to be photographed for the magazines, oh, the ones that they picked out, the editors picked out. So I I, some people didn't understand that that's how it worked, but that's, that's how it worked. And so that was the day and like Mary Greenwell, Sam McKnight, Patrick DeMolchier shot that picture. And so it was it, like a, a already, midnight in Paris. Yeah. So they have this already organized and you guys have to be on standby or something like that. And kind like of, kind yeah. of like you kind of go there and, uh, you know, you go, we went there for that. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. oh, this is the one um, we have the earrings, uh, like different earrings on the other side, all black, some watches. This is a, this is a Gilles Ben Simone picture and Gilles shot me the most variety. Like he would shoot me with my hair, you know, like he shot those pictures in Africa. I told you, I'll send yeah. them to you just so you see, because they're really sweet. And then, then he would shoot me very formal. So whatever his vision of, I, I mean, I was pretty, I, I wasn't, didn't make these like stands. Like, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. I would say, okay, you want me to totally cut my hair, make my you're hair flexible. totally straight. I'll do that. So yeah. <laughs> yeah you're flexible. These are like, now this, this is a photo and I remember seeing this. I don't know if it was an ad or if it was a picture just in a photograph, but I, I remember because the woman that's on the right, some of the people that I know that growing up, they knew who she was. Jennifer, Jennifer Noble. Yeah. Jennifer yeah, Noble. Yeah. I remember her. I remember her. She was really, really nice. Also in that picture, I can't believe this is so funny, but this was in Paris. It was myself, Carrie Otis and Jennifer Noble and Rosemary McGrotha, who was a little bit older than us. I think, I'm not sure. She was supposed to be in that picture with us. 
and she we went we, they put us all in white shirts and she saw that it was going to be a picture with four of us and she's like you know what let me just I think I left my purse in the car and she walked out and she never came back <laughs> okay why do you think she why do you, what was up with that? I think that a lot of girls at that time like when I was in San Francisco I there was a model there named Neat Hunter and she was beautiful and I went to LA and there was a magazine called LA Style and they always did these great sh photo shoots and we were meant to be in a picture together and she's like I don't do doubles so a lot of girls at that time didn't want to be in a picture with another and I think it would be so nice to have like these kind of pictures but some people didn't want to do it unless you were being paid for it that's obviously not a paid for thing oh, okay wow you understand the paid for right like you don't get paid that right much yeah, magazine. Just okay. like, yeah yeah so i've skipped the one we already had that this is the one with your Got it. yeah your, your your husband even though oh, right. getting images yeah, you guys really. are no, 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 yes. yeah but, um, <laughs> And, That's um, okay. <laughs> I like, I like, there are a lot of photos that I took from the internet. There are ones that you're out and about in society and the, the, a lot right. of them, I love, love, love them, right? But that's why they have the Getty, the Getty images on it, right? Okay. So they anybody to what use. are they going to do to you? <laughs> <laughs> they can't do anything. Yeah. Well, this is, um, and this is the, the photo from the, um, the super poster or the mega poster. We say mega poster. Yes, this is another one. We were just trying to decide what, what, kind of hairstyle so we did a couple of, you always shoot things they always say shoot it both ways you always shoot things a couple of ways so this was another possibility for that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it was rejected right okay this is the this is the Revlon ad that we talked about or one of because I remember you did more than one from what I understand right? this was sort of a big deal this yeah. is when I first when I first came to New York and I did this picture and I hadn't seen Christy in years. And I, I, you have to understand, there's something about modeling that's very, like, there's a loneliness to it. And you go someplace and you're by yourself. Like I was living in Paris, living in Milan, living in Japan. And then I came to New York and I was by myself and I didn't know anybody there. And I went one time and I saw, I couldn't believe this. I was walking downtown and I saw a door sign and it said, Turlington Campbell, right? And so I was like, I, it has to be those two live in this, in this apartment. And so I told them this story and they're like, why didn't you buzz? But I didn't know Naomi at the time. I knew Christy, but I just thought, I was like, should I just buzz and be like, can you guys take me for a coffee or something? <laughs> but so then I saw Christy this day and she's like, why did you take so long to come to New York? Like she'd already been working there for years. So that was a fun, fun day. But Avedon was pissed because we're both from California. And those whole point of that story was you're supposed to be from all these different places. He's like, oh, you pick two girls that are from the same town. It's not right. Right, but it worked, right? And I remember, yeah. was this the first one of the series? Because there seemed to be afterwards, I think one was successful. And then there just was a, then they started putting everybody in and, and kind of mixing it up. It wasn't the first, like the first one they did one with Paulina and yeah. Kirsty Bowser and right, they right. did, this wasn't one of the first ones. This is like, as it went and it started, Everything. started, yeah. Then everyone started to do it. Not everybody, but you know, they had Talisa Soto, Jerry Hall. There were yeah. so many of them yeah, and they yeah. were all, I mean, one was prettier than the next. You couldn't, there's nothing you could say oh, about it. It was so amazing. Good looking women. All right. So let me see. <laughs> <laughs> this is another uh, shot. We're going to go through these real quick. You just um, go ahead. want to make sure that this is you and Russell Simmons. Yeah. At that's, at a, that's at the um, party. That's at the launch party for the, the billboard. The launch party. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is another um, German Vogue. Maybe the same one, but a bigger. No, it's a different one. It's, it's a, a different, different one? It's totally different one. And that one's in Los Angeles, like in Venice against like, they just saw a blue wall and they're like, let's do this. Let's do it against mm -hmm, this wall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really nice. Mm -hmm. This is a good one. That's a photographer. Mark Abrams shot that. And this is a, a, a montage. There's Vogue, Vogue, the three that we, well, two of them <laughs> we saw on the upper upper right. And then on the left, I think it's, uh, it's a super beauty. I think um, that's an octo another October. Um, man, these are, and, and, and they all look somewhat different, but the same, right? Yeah. Especially. Yeah. This L, there's an L in the middle, L, uh, the, the, the middle left. Right. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Man, what fun! Jeez. 
Yeah, it's fun. It's, yeah, it's of course. It, it's definitely fun. You know that. Yeah, and there's you, um, Dennis Hopper. Oh yeah, that's right. the one I was telling you about. Yeah. I, said. I saw his um, widow at a party, and she's like, "Can you send me those pictures?" Yeah, man. What's great about photography, like when you, I still remember some of these photos, and I'm, you know, this is what many, many, many years later. Yeah. I remember this shot being somewhere, right? right. Now, this is something I didn't bring this up in the intro. This is you and Donald Trump. You dated, uh, who now is the former President Trump. I mean, what, just we'll, we'll talk, touch on this briefly. What do you think is happening now? What are your thoughts? And then, you know, we move on. What do you think is, I mean, and I think that no one wants to be a one, one term. Everybody wants to do it twice. Everyone wants to do it as many times as they possibly can. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know because we are not in touch. So sure. I don't know what's going on right now. Um, but my friend said, my friend said, oh, you know, they're going to ask you about Donald. I go, everybody always does. <laughs> I mean, it's hard not to. I'm surprised yeah. when people don't. It's hard not to. So, But I would tell people, I mean, just as much as I knew who you were, coming up when I was living in Jersey, of course I knew who he was as well. I mean, of like, course, and especially in Jersey, yeah. You yeah. guys were in the news, right? I mean, we would, you weren't on television as much. If, if, I just remember you in magazines, my, you know, thumbing through, I'm like, oh, here's that girl again. It's that woman again, you know? And um, I watched, I mean, I read, how did I know about this? Maybe it was I reading, I wasn't reading the New York Post at that time. I, mean, I think that they, I think that it was like outed in, because it was very subtle at first and then they, sort of exposed it they you yeah. know they sort of said you know it wasn't out at first I was very kept under wraps because also yeah you know, I, I had a child and I wasn't going to have all these you know public relationships and obviously going out with an extremely public person mm -hmm. so um then they, you know there's just pictures and they out they out you I think it was like the, love is not no love is not blonde and then they you know mm -hmm. so it was something like that and that was, you know, just something that you go, you know, we all, we all, sometimes you take a roller coaster ride, even though you know it's going to make you sick. So, you know, it doesn't, uh, yeah. just something. You don't have to explain. You don't have to explain. I, I, I'm I not mean, trying to explain. I have, don't have regrets about it. Or you don't have any regrets. Of course not. I like my, no, my not position is this, and we talked about it before. I'm not part of the um, right cancel culture uh, or the hate train. Nor I am I. Point now. I mean, people don't necessarily know what I went through and they don't know necessarily what you went through, but I'm at a point now where I'm like calling a truce <laughs> with myself I'm and glad. other people. Do you I'm glad I mean? you're saying that. I'm glad, well, there comes a time that you, is that going to be forever? There's always these things that uh, they go on forever. If something happened, it doesn't, I'm, I'm not into cancel culture either. I don't, I, I don't believe in destroying anything because I was a witness to September 11th, which a lot of people were, mm -hmm. you possibly could have been, yes. especially where you were. And, it, you know, I watched what was happening there. I don't believe in destroying things. And I think that you don't have to, it doesn't have to be in the same light as it is, but I think it's sad in San Francisco that we're going to take, now we're not going to have Lincoln. We're not going to have, um, it, I'm telling you something, David, if they said every bad thing that I did, or even a few, you sound like a monster. Everybody sounds that way. If you, that's all you talk about, you shouldn't be defined by the worst thing that you've done. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, like we, you and I were talking the other day about, you know, Sally Hemings. And I think that people didn't know that, you know, I don't think that they considered them the same way, you know, obviously not. Otherwise you would not have had a slave clearly, mm -hmm. but people, you can't say, you can't, no one thinks a man doesn't think the way that they do now. Right. People don't think the way they did back then. They're not supposed to. You know, my father, he never grew up. My father never grew up having a, a racist bone in his body. I mean, I, it's for lack of a better word. I don't really like to, I think it's an overused word. But my dad, when he was a little boy, he was really, really poor, which is why he's cheap. And he went to, I think that he says he wasn't. He says it's just a coincidence that he married my mom, but I was trying to get, do you like black girls? Did you like black people? Were you drawn to black You're people? Questioning him. And he said, he said, no. And I, I interrogate my parents. They're like, I'm so glad you do not live near us. And so I interrogate them and try to figure them out. And you and, can't, you can't. And I so said, right. why were you with, why did you go out with mom? So my aunts were visiting me in New York once 
And I said, what, you know, what, what was going on with dad? What was going on with dad? And they said, when he was little, he was drawn to black people and he went over to someone's house and they fed him. Right. Right. They're like, what's poor white boy has nothing. <laughs> He's starving. And my, my dad's mother found out and she beat him, ran wow. over him wow. with her car. And she said, I, they told me, and there's, there's no reason my aunt, one of my aunts is older than him and one younger. My, my aunt said, he looked at his, his, my dad's mother and said, when I grow up, I'm going to marry the blackest lady <laughs> I can find. <laughs> And my dad has no recollection, but I say, why did he say that? Why did they think that then? And he did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think the I think the lesson is because I and, and I also remember this is another, and well, I'm not gonna we could go on and on. I remember when um I think you you were on the Howard Stern show or somebody. It was Agent I wasn't Benza. on there. They were talking Agent. about me. And yeah. I didn't know about it. And they called me. I was, yeah, I remember. I, called in and go, I didn't call in. Why would I do that? I listened. I was, I was, I was totally taken aback by it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember when they when you they called you. So basically. But they talk our, about me like I don't. They, they talk about me, but they, they've never. They don't ask me questions. They don't. They just had them say what they say, but they've never said, oh, what really happened? Like, even in this book, someone told me. He just. <laughs> he says things. Yeah. What? <laughs> just the ancillary like just I think yeah. it was the thrill of having you having you on the line right. with both of them it was uh Donald Trump and, and AJ Benza was sort of vying yeah. for her and um I think it, for Howard it was the thrill right of just having the yeah. collision happen these are some oh, they um, run it all the time and just when I think it's over people are like, oh, <laughs> it's, oh no it's again <laughs> yeah. this is um what several photos of you and Naomi and you and um, various models here, El McPherson. Oh yeah, yeah you, I love. You were you were you were doing it up. You were doing it. I up. love it her. Early I 80s, love early eighties yeah. hair, um, sort of uh, you know almost an Egyptian. Uh, it's always and, the late eighties because that's when I started. But I don't I don't see your pictures anymore. But I know what you're talking about. I did. Yeah. I, I I'm friends with Elle and friends with Stephanie and. No, I love Naomi. I love Chris. I mean, you know, she's really a sweetheart. Yeah. I'm you, you've done it. You've done it. I mean, look, <laughs> you guys, you guys if, you, if you don't know who she is, and I want to talk briefly about the hair, and then, I, you know, I'm going to let you go. Like, you, okay. This, this idea of hair wolf, because you and I talked about this before, and I said, look, this hair thing, this hair thing is a huge, huge, huge thing. Um, We're obsessed. It's... it's, it's <laughs> And for whatever reason, I think that's the reason I started doing the research, right? And then I saw the hair rolls and I was like, oh, this is good. So how did you get involved though? How did you decide you were going to do this as a business? And, and you know, tell us a little bit more about this. Uh, and so we can get an uh, insight. It's a nurturing, it, because I know how women feel about their hair, because I was a person that was very self-conscious in my, about my hair my whole life. And in my career, like I told you, I would get sent home from jobs sometimes. And then I would go when I went swimming when I was a kid and I would go, and then I would leave and my hair would be like, I could barely get through the door. It was so big and crazy. So I was super self-conscious about that. But it's not, and it's sad because there's nothing to be negative. I see someone else like that. I'm like, oh my God, that's the greatest, that big hair. People have such confidence in their hair now. I love it. So that's what we were trying to do and say, you know, you, your hair is like your face. You feel like that about your face. You want to care for it and be kind to your hair like your face. Women love their hair. They're, it's their identity. It's their, you know, it, it, whether it's real or they have, I don't care what color your hair. So in Hair Rules, Dickie and I decided to make this product. And then I said, I think you need to have a salon if you're going to have a product line, you know, a, a base where you sell it and you show people what mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're about. And it is about inclusivity. Like at first, we had other people involved that said, you should, I don't like when people say, you need to wear your hair this way. You need to wear your hair natural. Don't tell people how to wear their hair, wear your hair, whatever, however you want it. It's your mm -hmm. hair, your choice, your rules. Yeah. So I made up that slogan for us because I just, I mean, I grew up with my mom having like long black hair and then she'd have an Afro and then she'd have, you know, she'd have a wig on sometimes. 
So I grew up with that identity and my mom's black girlfriends and that beauty salon culture right. where people would spend the whole day there talking, gossiping, laughing. And mm -hmm. my mom did hair as well as any hairdresser. And she okay. did all of our hair. Like that was the whole reason I started wearing my hair curly was because of my mom. When I was a kid, my mom always did my hair. You know, I had no choice with my hairstyle. Parted in the middle and braids until I was 13 years old. Mm -hmm. And only on picture day, one day a year, could I take my hair down. You can take your hair. Yeah, so you grew up. You grew up. One uh, day a year. Up, <laughs> yeah, I, I, come on. A hundred. You grew up. You know. A hundred percent. It's true. I mean, this is know, now you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like your mom was like, yeah. yeah. Definitely. You yeah. didn't know, and now you do. So, <laughs> um, so then when I was older, my mom would set my hair uh -huh. and then I would go to school and, she, you know, as older as a teenager, I, she set my hair. Then when I started modeling, I didn't know how to do my own hair. So I was just like, okay, I'll just be like this. Mm -hmm. I did not know how to do my own hair. So, I mean, eventually when, when they went, sent you back home, you had to figure out a way, right? I mean, like, when they wait, said, hold on. Now I job. can't hear you so well. Hold on a second. Yeah. Oh, you have an earpiece? Why yeah. can't I hear you? You figured that you had to... You had Wait, to say that again? When you when they started sending you home on jobs. Do jobs. You know? Do you... Right now I can hear you. Hello? Yeah. Testing. Sorry, sorry. Say, say that again. Say it again. When, when they would send you home, when the, when the people in the business would send you home, you know, because of whatever, your hair, or what, you had, in other words, you had to learn how to... And then you get very self-conscious about yourself, you know, and so mine came... The product line came out just an insecurity about myself and not having a confidence about, you know, how it was going to look or how it was going to come off the way someone's like, I would see somebody and I go, oh, that person's not going to be able to do my hair. Oh, you like know, I would, instantly you knew. Yeah, I would okay, well, instantly on jobs, know. On jobs. I go, as soon as they put their hand in my hair, I was like, oh my you God, knew. they're not going to be able to. You knew. You knew. They're not going to be able to do my hair. Yeah, my, my hair is going to look crazy. And then there's people like Sam McKnight, Howard Fugler, Orbe, so many people who just know, or they don't even try to do you different than you are. They just do, they just mold your hair in a, you know, in a different I know, way. I so, know. how I know the only reason why I know is because I've been involved. Where I mean, I'm not a model, right? Like yourself, but I've been shot for certain things, and I'm like, yeah, you look they, like one though. They, they, they I thought you not, might have been. No, 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 no. I said to myself, they're not going to know what they're doing. Like I, I, I know right. from the very beginning, just in terms of how they are approaching me, mm -hmm. they're not going to. They're not going to. So. I mean, it happened just recently where I was, I'm in the magazine of, um, I'm supposed to be in the final, what is it, the annual report for the company that I worked for. And they showed me the picture and I was like, why did they put that picture? Like, I already knew. I knew I had a gut reaction. I said, they don't, they, they, that's the wrong picture. That's the wrong picture. Yeah. It shouldn't be that. But picture. you should, but I think that you should ask, like you, now if something's about you, you should say, can I take a look at those? Can I take a, you know, can I take a peek at those? So you, you, you could, it, there's nothing wrong with doing that. I mean, uh, because my son's a photographer and he always shows me, because I'll say this, a, you know, a girl doesn't want to look like that. A woman doesn't want to. Uh -huh. And I tell him all the time, don't just shoot models. Know how to shoot everyone, men, women, yes. and know how to shoot every age of person. Don't just like, he shot Anna Devere Smith. He shot different people. And I, I want him to know how to shoot all ages of people because you know, it's your, it, that beauty and appeal, appeal is the word that you'd like to say it, that, that continues throughout your life. Sure. And people can look great, even if they're not, I mean, this is, I mean, this is a, from a, an artistic or creative, I've seen people that are characteristically not model types, whatever you want to call it, sure. but they have a beauty about them. And that's what you want to, you know, you, you want to. Yes. Get. Let me ask you specifically about the product. When you developed the product, how did you I mean, what, what kind of product is it and, and how did it take uh, or evolve or what did you have to do in order to get the actual stuff in the, you know, in the box? Well, you, you have to actually go. We went to your home place of New Jersey. We went to manufacturers. We tried to find different manufacturers, people to do it. You, you know, you give them the, you, you give them the ingredients. We have a mousse. We have two shampoos, a, a shampoo like aloe grapefruit for a mm. deep cleaning. And then we have like a 
conditioning balm cleaner. Dickie doesn't believe that you should ever wash your hair. He thinks that you could all, should always just condition your hair. And I think that you need to wash your hair because wait, I feel it gross strips, if I, He thinks it strips too much out of it? Exactly, exactly. And I see his point as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My husband is the same as you. And so he thinks that, you know, you never need to wash your hair, but I do. And we have a, a mousse. We have styling gels. We Not styling gels. We have like a finishing cream. Yeah. We have a quint. We, the, I'm not going to say this is the best thing, but I love the quench conditioner. It's like this thick, thick, pasty, thick conditioner. Mm -hmm. So, and that's like the staple, it like comes in a bucket. And so, you know, that's, we have all of those things. And um, I'm not as involved in it as I once was. Mm -hmm. It's, but there's a good, you know, eight, 10 years of my life that I was. And, um, and I believe in it. And I, Think it should have been wildly successful and there's things like that you we didn't know what to do and things that we did right or we could have done better you know for ourselves just like every business and everything sure. you know you do in life but it's an amazing product no right look I, that was the, the the thing that brought me sort of in a backward way to you right which was you know i was talking to someone a black woman we were doing an interview and the idea of this whole thing of hair came up and it was almost like i remember when i was in college going in i would go to to my friends who were girls uh like they used you know before of them in one room and i would go like in the bathroom or something and i would open the cupboard in the bottom and there would be stacks of hair care product i mean like you know <laughs> stacks you know what I mean? Like, you know, from one end to the other. And this is when I knew, like, when the dollar signs started to come, you know, in my mind, when, when I was coming up, you know, wanted to talk to you about this, is that um, I said, the numbers of products that they tried and talked about and, you know, sort of, you know, this one's good, that's one, that one's not good, this and this. I mean, there's a whole... Well, there's an industry, but there's a, a, a talk or a conversation, a constant. Oh, it's 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 and, such a, it's uh -huh. it's such a culture, and every time I go somewhere else, uh -huh. like when I go to California, I go to a beauty salon there, and it's you're right, it's such a culture, it's such an obsession of, you know, of what they're using, what what's good, mm -hmm. what's not good, and there's a sharing of that information, and you know, and the amount of money that it, they're willing yeah. to spend on their hair is incredible. Like my mom, we, my mom, there was no, my mom still, my mom still will always go get her hair done. You know, it's just a normal, it, it's just a cultural thing. Is it once, like, you know? does she do it twice a month or like, is there a, a schedule once a, once See, a week? See, I do mine like once every five days and they all laugh at me. And they say, why do you do your hair so much? And I say, I just don't, I just don't like the way that it feels to, you know, not to do it less than that. Mm -hmm. you know, I just don't like the way that, it, that it feels. But when I went to the salon in California, she goes, you're crazy. Most of my clients, some come once a week, but some come every other week. Right. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, I, yeah. I exercise, so I don't see how I could do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, I mean, is there anything else that we, we, we talked quite a bit. I mean, it was great. You, you have such, um charisma and energy and like I'm very <laughs> happy that you and I got to talk because it's very different for a number of reasons it's very different from the group of people that I came up with right it's a different right. energy and you know had I not gone to college let's say and I did the, the traditional thing I probably would have been right up there with you and all the rest of <laughs> your buddies I just didn't know you know I just didn't know how to navigate that like I knew for right. your college that was my trajectory. You know, people were like, oh, you're going to become a dancer. And I was like, no, you know, so I was, I was the equivalent of those models that kind of just showed up once and you said, hey, they're really pretty. And then they were gone and never came back. Right? That so, happened a lot. That happened a lot. And I go, what happened to yeah. what, where, what happened to her? But it's always that way. It's, it ha I mean, I have friends that are actresses and that, that happens with people a lot. It's just, it, to your point, it's a lot. Like I said, there was, a lot of years of my life, my, my husband thinks I'm so weird. He goes, you'll do so many things by yourself. You'll go so many places by yourself. And it has to do with being by myself a lot. I'm yeah. used to that. Um, I'm used to that kind of thing. So that that's why I do it. And you have to, there's a dedication that you have to have. Once you're involved with somebody, you you go for it a bit less. 
Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like when I do makeup a lot for my son and he shoots all these young girls and I, I always say, do you have a boyfriend? Oh, you know, maybe you should. You know, if they don't, I go, that's good. <laughs> don't have a boyfriend for a while and go places and work, you know. So. Well, what's interesting, I'll ask you this and I'll let you go. It's interesting that your son is sort of in the same, is, is, is doing the same thing that his- He his tried father. hard not to. <laughs> he tried like it, so it's, hard. It's, it's in him, right? It's, it's a part of it's who he is, him. clearly. He resisted it. He worked on Wall Street. He worked for Russell for a while. He's a, he's a really good, he's very left brain and right brain, which I'm sure you are as well. Yeah. He, he did creative things, financial things. Yeah. And, and it's, he tried very hard not to do it, but he's really, really good at it. And he's also really that modern way where he's really good at retouching as well. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So um, you, get a, you get a package with him. Yeah. Because he's gonna, he, he's not gonna do your pictures and send them off. He's gonna do them himself. So you know, yeah, he can't. He can't. I mean, I think as we were talking about, it, if it's in your DNA, um, and he gets it from more than one. Yeah, he, poor thing. He clearly. grew up on photo, right. photo so, shoots. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's like it's inevitable. It would happen. Not. It doesn't happen with every sibling, right? Or with yeah. every. Yeah. Sometimes it skips. But uh, it's a fascinating conversation. Is there anything else? I, would, I mean, I would, I would love to talk to you more, but I'm going to let you go. No, and, you can text me or call me if you think of something else you want to say or add on or something you yeah. want to write about. Okay, that's fine. You have my number. Yeah. and um, Go to sleep. Will, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's about like um, 10, 10 of 10. But we will, we will um, I'm, I'm going to put this up as quickly as I can. And then okay. we'll see what happens. And then, um, you know, stay safe. Hopefully, you know, when everything is over and whenever that is, we'll get to see I each know. other in person. And... I, I can't keep doing this. I need variety. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, take care of yourself and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. All and right. Thanks for your call. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank right. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, David.